Welcome to another episode of You're in Mr. DeMood's class, but I'm not. First thing you probably want to do is take all of these law of cosines right here, put them into your journal. We're going to be working through problem number one and problem number two, so you might want to get your journal out ready to go. Um, you can certainly pause the video if you need to. But right now I'm going to go ahead and work on problem number one. probably hear things in the background like my wife laughing at me, my daughter asking me questions, but you're just going to have to deal with it. Or you might hear popcorn popping in the background in the microwave. But you know what? I'm hungry. My daughter's hungry. So right now I'm going to draw a triangle. I'm going to label this side 12 this side 20 and this side 28. This is lowercase a, this is capital A. This right here, this side is lowercase b, the angle opposite is capital B. And last but not least, if this is lowercase c, this is capital C. So there's a picture of your triangle and what we're going to attempt to find is all three angles and all three sides. So we've got an angle. Lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase e. The good news is, is you are half done. 20 12, 28, okay? So at this point, you'll notice right here, we have all three sides. So something you need to understand, the law of cosines works when you have all three sides of a triangle. We're going to use that to find angle A, angle B, and then we'll take those away from 180 and that will give us angle C. So right now, look at your formula right here. We'll take the top one, which states a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times the cosine of angle A. Something you need to notice is that if you have, if you're using lowercase a for the side, you'll be using angle a at the very end. Okay. Lowercase a, capital A. The other is just the other two sides. So right now, we're going to find this angle right in here, whatever the measure of that is, by using everything that we have and plug it in. So we're going to plug in right here. We're going to plug in a 20. We're going to square it. We're going to take b squared and c squared minus 2 times b times c times the cosine of a. Things you need to understand whenever you're trying to find the angle, eventually we are going to use the inverse button. Okay, so you'll eventually use the inverse button and make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. If it's not in degree mode, you're going to get an answer that doesn't make sense. So, right now, I'm going to highlight certain things that we're going to do. We're going to do this separately. We're going to do this separately. And we're going to do all of this right here separately. Do not try to do this all at once. So go ahead and turn your calculators on. All right. Um, we already know what 20 squared is. That's 400. Let's do 12 squared plus 28 squared, and that gives us 928. So right here, I'm going to write down 400 equals 928 minus 2 times 12 times 28 
We've got 672. Let me check. 2 times 12 times 28. Yep, 672. Times the cosine of A. Now, this is where students will make a mistake. They'll think they're allowed to subtract these when they're not, because these are not like terms. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take away the 928 from both sides. Okay. So you're going to take the 928 away from both sides, and that's going to give you a negative 528 equals a negative 672 times the cosine of A. Whenever you have a negative on opposite sides of the equal sign, they'll just cancel each other out. So we are going to divide both sides by 672. So here's what you have left. You have the cosine of angle A equals this fraction, 528. And I'm not going to reduce it right now. We could, but no need to right now. 528 over 672. Now, this is where you need to apply the inverse on both sides. So what we're going to do is on this side right here and on this side right here, we're going to apply what's called the inverse of cosine, which allows these to cancel out, and now you are just left with angle A. So in the calculator right now, do the inverse cosine, just like this. Second, cosine, you're going to type in 528 divided by 672. You get 38.2. So that's your approximate angle. 38.2 degrees. So right here for angle A, right 38.2 degrees. And now we're on to finding angle B. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight angle B in a different color. Right here. So we're going to find angle B. This one we found to be 38.2 degrees. All right. So here we go. B squared. Oh, let me change colors. B squared equals B squared. Not plus B squared. Plus the other side squared. C squared minus 2 times A times C times the cosine of angle B. So whenever you're, you're finding one side, you're going to be using the other two sides in the formula, and then you're using this lowercase, whatever this one is, you're using that angle right there. Okay, So just plug in everything that we have. Alright, so let's see what we have here. Alright, our B value is 12, so we're going to plug in 12 squared. Our A value is 20. Our C value is a 28. Minus 2 times our A value, which is 20. And our C value, which is a 28. Once again, make sure you do things separately. So we're going to go and work these out. 12 squared is 144. 20 squared plus 28 squared is 1184. And then we have 2 times 20 times 28, which gets us 1120. So 11 minus 1120 times the cosine of B. Okay. So once again, we need to take away the 1184 from this side and 1184 from over here. And make sure you don't try to combine these because these are definitely not like terms.
and you get negative 10 for 30. negative 1120 times the cosine of B. So whenever you have negatives on both sides, make sure you cancel them to a positive. Divide both sides by 1120. So you have the cosine angle B equals 1040 over 1120. And this is where you apply the inverse of cosine to both sides. Capital B equals, or angle B equals the inverse of cosine, 1040, divided by 120. And that will give us our approximate value. So second cosine, 1040. Divided by 1120, you get approximately 21.8 degrees. 21.8 degrees. Let's get up here. So for angle B, you're going to put 21.8 degrees. Now you're just going to take these two right here. Just take them away from 180. So go to your calculator. 180 minus 21.8 minus so 32.8 I think it was there's right 38.2 and you get about 120 degrees it's right here for angle C right here 120 degrees. You have now solved for your triangle. Just remember, whenever you're asked to solve for a triangle, you're finding all the angles and all the sides. So here's problem number one, worked out it in its entirety. Make sure you have that in your journal. And what did we start with? We started with three sides. So we actually had to find two of these angles before we're able to subtract from 180 to get uh, angle C. Now some of you, some of you may like the law of sines. Well you could actually use, once you find one angle, if you want to use the law of sines, you're more than welcome to, okay? So if you like um, A over sine of A equals B over sine of B, and you wanted to find that 21.8 using the law of sines, you can. The law of cosines, law of cosines is going to be a little bit more accurate um, because we are using this approximate value for 38.2. But we'll, I'll show you real quick how you get, get that by using the law of sines. Uh, we won't take that long. So we have 20 over the sine of 38.2 degrees equals. Uh, we already know what lowercase b is. That's 12. 12 over the sine of b. So after you cross multiply, you guys have, I remember I wrote, wrote down like six shortcuts. You should already have this. So angle B, all right, will end up equaling the inverse of sine. So if we cross multiply, you're going to get 12 times the sine of 38.2 degrees. Close that right there. Over 20. 12 sine 38.2 degrees over 20. So I'm going to do that right there. Inverse of sine. Alpha y equals enter. And make sure I got it. 12 sine 38.2. Okay, type it in. 12 sine 38.2. Close the parentheses over 20. And you should get a pretty close answer. You'll notice that they're not exactly equal, but it's close enough for to, if we're rounding it to the nearest tenth. You can see how this answer, using the law of cosines, is actually the most accurate, but 27.78 is pretty darn close to 21.79. So 
can still use the law of sines if you wanted to. So either use the law of cosines or the law of sines, but you had to start this with the law of cosines because you were not given any angles. So that's problem one. Now on to problem two, and then the rest of this you're going to be working on your own. Uh, three is going to be similar to number two. Four is going to be similar to number one. So we're going to go and work on problem number two. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a triangle that eh, semi-represents what it should look like. It's, it's not going to be drawn to scale, but I'll try to make a side that's around 10 in length and then the one that's an 8 and make an angle that's around 100 degrees. So I'm going to call this side 8, call this side 10, and then right here in between it I'm going to put 100 degrees. So this is angle B. A is 10. So lowercase a is here, which means capital A has to be over here. This is C. So capital C has to be over here. Now you'll notice here we have a side, an angle, and a side. So the other time you're allowed to use the law of cosines is side, angle, side. Over here it was side, side, side. Problem number one. Now the other, the other situation where you would use the law of cosines is you would use it for side, angle, side. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to find B. That's what we're going to do right here. Now this is going to be really, really, really easy. So I'm going to set it up. B squared equals A squared plus C squared. These are the other two sides. All right. Minus 2 times A times C times the cosine of B. Now this situation is where you can actually plug in everything all at once and you don't have to do things separate. This is going to be super easy. So right now just plug in A, 10 squared, C, 8 squared, minus 2, times my A value, times my C value, times the cosine of my B value. So I have everything that I need to plug in. So right now I am just going to use calculator and just type in everything right here exactly as it appears so you can follow along with me write it down in your journal and follow along with me it won't take too long here we go clear this out we've got 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 10 not 0 times 8, times the cosine of 100. Got to make sure you're in degree mode. And just press enter. Got 191.8. So I got to take the square root of this. And your answer is approximately 13.8 units. So right here, all of this, b squared was approximately equal to, what was it? 191.78 and you got to take the square root and the square root and that gave us the approximate value of 13.8 so right here this right here is about 13.8 so in your answer box right here once again I'm going to label Angle A, angle B, angle C, lowercase a, lowercase b, and lowercase c. So angle A we don't know yet. Okay. Angle B we do. It's 100. Angle C don't know yet, but we do know A, B, and C. You know. 10. We know the B value is approximately equal to 13.8, and we know the C value is equal to 8. So we have a choice. Do we want to use the law of cosines to find angle A, or do we, or C, or do we want to use the law of sines? Well, now that we have all of this, we can actually use the law of sines to do it, which will be a lot faster. So here we go. A over the sine of capital A equals 
B. But we'll do the sign of capital B. So let's plug in what we have. So lowercase a is 10. Sine of a is 10 kappa I know. Uh, angle B right down here is 100. And side B is around 13.8. So we're going to cross multiply. Right here. You can use your shortcut if you wanted to. If you want to look at your journal and use your shortcut, you can certainly can, can do that. If you want to do it this way, you can certainly say 13.8 times sine of A equals 10 times the sine of 100 and divide both sides by 13.8. These cancel out. So eventually, after you apply the inverse of sine on this side and the inverse of sine on the other side, angle A will equal the inverse of sine 10 times the sine of 100 degrees over 13.8. So I'm just going to go to my calculator, type in second sine, 10. Times the sine of uh, 100. Actually, I'll do alpha y plus. There we go. Ten sine of 100. And just to be more accurate, I'm going to go back up here. All right, I'll go back up here. And grab that. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, this. Whoa. Not really. It leaves it a lot. Let's see. I see it'll do it now. Experiencing technical difficulties. I'll just type in 13.4. Alright, here we go. And it gets us 45.3. So right here, 45.3 is going to be the measurement of my angle, 45.3 degrees, add those up, take them away from 180, 180 minus this right here, minus another 100, and your last angle is 34.7 degrees. Now, the other way you could do this is you could set up the law of cosines again to find the measure of the angle. We did that over in problem number one. Um, but you'll find problem number uh, two is similar to three, which will be a lot faster. So on this one, the difference between the first one. The first one, you had to break it down into this step, this step, and this step. Okay. This one, to find that first side, was really easy. All you had to do was just plug in everything and put it underneath a radical, and that gave you your opposite side. Your job today is to assimilate this information and do problems three and four. And uh, if you want to try to work one of these out on your own, you can write down Hero's formula. Or try to find the area of a triangle using this formula right here. Okay. So good luck, and I will see you tomorrow.